Here we go. We're going to start this again. Welcome to RealLibertyMedia.com, RLMRadio.xyz. I'm your host, Vincent Easley. I'm here with a ponder gander at what matters and consider perspectives, sometimes connecting voices. Today I'm looking at the Oregon standoff, the Senate Republican walkout. Started the uh, 20th of June, which would have been a week ago yesterday. It's uh, scheduled, the session scheduled to end at midnight Sunday, which would be uh, June 30th at midnight, so I believe that would be right. Now, they're talking about coming back in tomorrow morning, the Republicans are. There's uh, 11 of them walked out uh, to protest this uh, cap and trade. So we'll go back into this, and uh, I didn't get too far in before I remembered I didn't push the court. Uh yeah, be the media and take back your future. Yeah, just try. Do better. Journalism, that is truth needs defense. And uh, you you are what you do, not what you say you'll do. Be the media. Today, is the, uh, the battle for the American West continues, it could be called the clash between two American dreams. Beyond the job, Oregon senators are protecting their constituency. Have they comported avoidance? And when is enough enough? Republicans fled amid Democratic supermajority in Oregon State Legislature 2019 regular session, failing the numbers required for a quorum. Best known as cap and trade in Oregon's House Bill 2020, a punitive carbon tax or pay as you pollute climate change measure it misses the mark. So I was talking about uh, how covered he, he went from 20 four minutes into one one hour and eight minutes last week specifically uh, specifically talking about this and and referred throughout so the whole two hours is uh, definitely the you, you want to listen to all if you haven't already listened to Hal, Hal Anthony right here at Real Liberty Media on Sundays at noon o'clock on the left coast out there where uh, all this contingency is going on so what happened are we duty bound so take a look from behind the woodshed, and uh, it'll be right here. You can click it to listen. Uh, Hal walks us through and points out where they really failed to address this uh, it's tax without representation. And, and I've seen a few people talking about this, Hal, also, that, uh, I mean, legally it'd have to go through the voters, but they passed it through as an emergency thing uh, following California. Uh, it's people are up in arms. They've they've got the the capital field trucks and loggers and uh, farmers and ranchers are all worried about uh, how it's going to affect their livelihood. And most of the work's already gone. All the jobs nearly gone from Oregon in the the Pacific Northwest. You know, uh, as a a con conservative of the land, you you would think uh, we could see some common ground here. From the left and the right, uh, if if you're working the land, you don't want to destroy it because then you don't have anything left. That the the days we, we've come along and found law that brings us to peace through the uh, Taylor Grazing Act and now there then it becomes convoluted when they come along in the 1970s. There that kicked off this whole uh, war in the West in these uh, uh, extreme environmentalism and outright lies of what uh, I said. Grimner said I said something, dude. Yes, duty, D-U-T-Y. We have a duty and uh, an obligation to uh, a address the criminality in the world of this occupation that we're in. A lot of people don't see it. So uh, trying to beat it into their heads not going to make a person see your, your point of view. <clears throat> and you can even be nice with people and uh, have a different point of view. And uh, Most times you're not going to change anybody's mind. So I don't. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. Uh, report in, uh, and keeping a record here, setting the record, being a witness. So it was a, a highly contentious legislation, and it would uh, institute a sweeping cap-and-trade program in Oregon, again, following the one in California. Uh, California, it's uh, they've been running people out of there for a long, long time. I don't even know how they survive. It's one of the world's largest economies, California is. It's amazing, though all these digits and uh, fiat currencies that's floating around and we've got all the other ones that go with them now cryptocurrency because the good old greenback just ain't good enough no more let's uh let's carry on the ponzi scheme shall we 
Uh, Oregon Senate standoff continues. Uh, could a few words make a difference? This comes from uh, Dirk. Uh, I've put this stuff so small, but he's over on Twitter. Dirk Vanderhart, I think his name is. Uh, and this comes from the 21st of this month. It says that Republican senators refused to show up for work at the Oregon legislature for a second day Friday. So that was, uh, they walked out a, a week ago, or the 20th. So that was Friday, a week ago today that he's writing. And... And their standoff with Democrats seem to have no end in sight. So a lot of uh, fighting. The, the Democrats have the supermajority. They have, I think, 20 senators, and uh, the Democrats have 12, and, and one has died, so they have uh, 11. And the, the Senate session needed 10 more to make a quorum. And, um, okay, clearing on. State police communicating with uh, with uh, missing Oregon senators as Democrats balk at any new deal. Comes from uh, Claire Withcomb and Mark Miller and uh, Aubrey Weber at or Oregon Capitol Bureau, June 20th. Uh, Republicans disappear. Uh, Democrats dig in. State police get polite, and the next steps for the Oregon legislature are unclear. Governor Kate Brown appears in no mood to deal as she did last month to end a similar walkout by Senate Republicans. Oregon legislatures in the minority have often used walkouts as a leverage. You notice it didn't say Democrat or Republican there, just the minority. So the Democrats have, I guess, in recent history taken, uh, taken the seats of power there. Uh, I was trying to find out what this is, and I see it uh Sherry Wilson is using it also. It's a hashtag, I-C-Y-M-I. -I. Anybody want to take a peek and see if they can figure out that hashtag, these letters, I-C-Y-M-I. -I. But it's uh, running with this, uh, the Oregon Senator walkout. So in 2001, then-Senator Democrat leader, uh, Oregon Governor Brown, called the House Dems walkout in 2001 very appropriate and said under certain, uh, certain circumstances, it's fair to say we would use all tools available to us and stage a similar boycott. Well, here we are. Senate, uh, and I've got a type on there for uh, uh, ours. Yeah, that's a Republican. Senate Republicans fighting for Oregonians. Is that kind of the wrong way to say it? Uh, Oregonian, I guess that's why everybody say it. Everybody says Arkin, uh, Arkansan, and that's just very offensive to me. Uh, so, Oregonians, <laughs> I'll fold the paper. Uh, so here are some of the most uh, significant ones prior to Thursday's walkout, and uh, this will be in the radio log here where you can click on and uh, go see all those folks. So I've got a lot of uh, a lot of links in here. And where do you find more information? If the Oregon Republicans walk out on the 2020 vote, can police really arrest them? And uh, Lars, this is, uh, you'll find a uh, audio here where he's talking to somebody. Uh, Lars brings on Bernie Gisto, a retired uh, Malamaw County Sheriff, Mount, let's see, Molt de Ma. I'm not uh, from out there, so I'm not real good with these county names. They're like Malheur, they got some uh, a lot of Indian names there, so you got to know how to say them. But the county sheriff to discuss what actions Governor Kate Brown is planning on taking in regards to Republican senators walking out to block the vote on HB 2020. Kate Brown has threatened to send state troopers to round up the Republicans, but can the police physically arrest them? Uh, you can listen below for more. Uh, there is a provision in the state constitution that says lawmakers can be compelled to attend a floor session in the Senate. So this is a question I've not a had answer yet. Um, is is it against the law? I mean, they're getting fined 500 a day for uh, each for not being there. But is there an actual law that they could be arrested under other than a rule or a, a so forth? These rules, is, I've got a link down here too on uh, the rules of how the, that all works. Let me see somebody saying. Uh, well, Gramner tells me why uh, I-C-Y-M-I. -I. Oh, well, it was just uh, too simple. In case you missed it, 
I thought it really had some kind of meaning. But, you know, Twitter, you only get a, what, 140 characters or 80 or something. Well, where am I? Here? Thank you, Grimmer. I appreciate that. Um, duty to enforce laws and regulations of agencies. And there there will be the link right there. You can see all that. The, the state police, with approval of the governor, may be called upon by any branch or department of the state government to enforce criminal laws or, here we go, any regulations of such branch or department. Uh, amendment uh, amended by 1971 C58 2011 Oregon Revised Statutes uh, ORS Volume 5 Chapter 17 uh, 20 no 200 ORS Chapter 181.050 and uh, Universal Citation also there's uh, all the citations and links so police started searching uh, start searching for senators. Oregon, Oregon State Police began calling the Republican members, trying to determine their locations. Uh, one theory is in the Capitol is that uh, that a handful of Republicans boarded a small plane Wednesday afternoon and flew to Missoula, Montana. Now, I believe some are in uh, Idaho. I'm not going to be touching too heavy on the militia. I'm going to refer you to uh, uh, a few folks. To uh, see that, and and Hal and I both are in agreement. And it's a real bad idea to go uh, talking about killing folks and uh, dragging them out and their blood in the street and all that stuff and starting a war. Just uh, you know, it's not only is it a very bad idea for society and people, and uh, history will tell you time and time again that uh, it's stupid too if you're saying stuff like that because you can uh, expect the FBI is going to be coming for you. How many times have I told you to guard your words? Some people are a little more clever than others, and some are just uh, not very smart at all. Listed below are all the current Republican state senators uh, also listed. Are their capital phone numbers and emails, office and website addresses. And link here for the Oregon state senators, both Republicans and Democrats. Rats. Oregon laws 1999 to 2018 sessions are here. Uh, the Oregon laws are often called the session laws. Each enrolled bill approved by the governor is assigned an Oregon law chapter number by the Secretary of State. Chapter numbering begins with one for each regular or special session. session. Statutory initiatives adopted by the voters receive Oregon laws chapter numbers for the regular sessions that follow the election. So, you know, I, I might have... Uh, uh, this might not be a regular session then, because if it's a House, uh, House Bill 2020, well, I probably have some listed that information wrong there. Maybe this isn't. Maybe this is a special session because it was uh, this bill, but they got other stuff on the table they're trying to uh, get through. So it's got to be a regular. I don't know. Maybe that was added in, but it was called an emergency thing too. So uh, if somebody knows more about that, they can come along and correct me, but I appreciate it. Uh, Oregon farmers, truckers, loggers, and senators rebel against the Democrats. This is from uh, this is from Drew Kristinev. It looks like June uh, 26th of 2019. Uh, the various funds and grant programs outlined in the bills are voluminous, indefinite, and are, are vacacious, that is, vacacious, vacacious. I thought I knew that word. Indefinite and ambivalent. What has made a few inroads into the national news cycle is the rebellion of truckers, loggers, and according to a source, upcoming protests by farmers. Under the Oregon Constitution, Article 2, uh, provisions may be made by law to require that persons who vote upon questions of levying, levying special taxes or issues uh, or issuing public bonds shall be taxpayers. As this cap and trade appears to be a special tax, wouldn't a referendum vote be necessary to implement the plan rather than uh, legislative action? Now, that's what a lot of people are saying. But then there are others who are saying, oh, we're, we're all going to die because of climate change. And cow farts and all that, 
what I guess there's cows on the moon now. Found the methane there. Is that right, Grimner? Uh, so people, uh, perhaps the, the Democrats believe that by levying a tax without calling it a tax, terming them allowances that can be auctioned and awarded as credits against greenhouse gas em emitted, gases emitted, they're uh, sidestepping the constitutional directive stated in Article uh, 9, uh, Section 3, tax imposed only by a law, statement of purpose, no tax shall be levied except in accordance with law. Every law imposing a tax shall uh, uh, imposing a tax shall state distinctly the purpose to which the revenue shall be applied. So it, you can read all through here if you want to really get down to the to nuts and bolts there and you'll you'll see where all this other information is in there. So that uh that they don't even have it really set up. It's like uh we've got what how many pages and pages and pages that you hear about in uh, no we can't we can't read it we got to pass it and then we'll read it or whatever who's going to read it probably no one so is it dead or playing possum the Oregon uh, Senate president suggests that uh, HB 2020 is dead uh, it's from Jim Everett uh, June the 25th <clears throat> here's a from Vinny RLM Radio, Oregon's Captain Trade, HB 2020, dead or playing possum. So I added that in there. And uh, this uh, comes back in through hell and KXL.com. Uh, the Oregon Senate president uh, saying, I, I think he might be trying to trick them back in there. But you can see in here in the radio log, and uh, Hal's got uh, weighing in there. Behind the woodshed, it's uh, at Behind the Woodshed on Twitter. Come on along and. Uh, if you can, if you can wait through, it's it's hard. It really is hard to learn something when you already think that you know it, or you, you've heard the echo chamber and then just stuff doesn't make uh, make sense, does it? So let's see. Hal said he didn't pull that treasonous bill, as he is duty bound to do it if he were actually working for the people. And please don't confuse his statement as a mere unsustained, uh, subst unsubstantiated opinion. There's a 2013 default judgment against the state, him, yep, and the government. Um, so Oregon Republican uh, lawmakers say they are not taking any chances. I might have to click that one so I can get a little more who, who that is. I didn't finish that one, it looks like. Yeah, this is from Newsweek Politics. Uh, Benjamin Fear Now. <laughs> what a name, Fear Now. <coughs> Ben Fear now, huh? <clears throat> Excuse me. I've I noticed that uh, names sometimes they just like, uh, especially in Bruce Doucette's case up in Denver, the, the names of those involved: uh, Spear, Judge Spear, uh, Robert Shapiro, like Robert Ship. You got Miss Wart was on the prosecution. Ryan English, the FBI agent, and also special. Witness prosecution in the court. I I don't get that. Get up and testify before Bruce could, and you know, knowing what he's going to say and squash it down. And then jury instructions. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. You know, if anybody can really understand it all, they've uh, probably still don't understand it. So Oregon uh, Republicans gloat on Fox News while hiding in Idaho to escape climate change. Voice. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people have been uh, pretty critical, and uh, it's. My contingency that uh, they they are were doing their job. They were doing their duty. Their job is to do their duty. It's not to follow. Specifically, if a rule is wrong, then uh, we have a duty and obligation to challenge that. Um, now, this cap and trade. Uh, a lot of people on the left think it's good, but still, I, I know that it is a stalking horse. It's a false front, and it's uh, another step. And this is a big step too to uh, to rob us. If, if the occupiers, what, what? Just look at a dollar. We're talking about crypto earlier. What's a dollar worth? A penny or two from its actual value? And then the Ponzi scheme from the Federal Reserve. So I mean, they're not going to be happy until they have your uh, your breath of life. Forget your uh, your property and possessions. Yeah. One of the 11 runaway Republican Oregon state senators described his escape from the state police over a climate change vote 
even appearing on Fox News from an undisclosed location as he evades potential arrest. Or can Republican lawmakers say, or not, say they are not taking any chances? That's right. After fleeing the state in order to avoid giving the state legislature uh, the state legislature quorum, which would allow a vote on cap and trade system intended to limit carbon carbon emissions, State Senator Tim Knob, speaking with the Wall Street Journal uh, Monday, detailed his initial escape to neighboring Washington State, where he became fearful that climate change friendly Democrat Governor Jay Inslee would have him arrested and sent back to Oregon. He drove his hybrid, he's, what a guy, he's even driving a hybrid Ford Fusion to a lakeside cabin in Idaho, yeah, probably safe in Idaho, where he appeared on Fox and Friends and bragged that he was hiding in plain sight. That's the best way to do it, I guess, if uh, keep your head down to some degree. Uh, that's probably not hiding in plain sight, buddy, with your head down. So Knapp told Fox and Friends host Steve uh, Ducey Tuesday he had spoken with the Oregon State Police Superintendent twice and politely declined to allow troopers to return him to Salem. Boy, I remember another Salem had witch trials. (laughs) Times have changed, huh? And the witches are doing the burning now, uh, which reminds me. uh, At least one other Oregon Republican state senator who fled the state Cliff Bentz described purchasing a burner cell phone to avoid being tracked, and he said he has changed hotels uh, routinely to stay one step ahead of law enforcement. You guys, I'll guarantee they know where everybody is. Everybody. And if you don't know who the uh, undercover informant snitch is among you, there's one there. Believe you me, they've got them in place. So they were playing this. Uh, I think they were playing this with the with the soft glove when the uh, the militia came out. And mainstream really hasn't uh, spoke a lot about this, but the uh, the three percenters have uh, stepped up and said that they'd offer their services in protecting any way they could. Uh, Eric Parker, I, I think uh, I, I think he's guarding his words more carefully. Of course, uh, there's a lot of people that was. Uh, been put in prison for uh, words there now yeah lose your life for your words don't say the wrong thing especially somebody pointing a gun at you yeah you say shoot (laughs) no 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 don't even say it with your hands up well Idaho State Police have said they're not pursuing Oregon runaway Republicans because they they they've not broken any law in its own state uh, any of its own state laws and uh, any Idaho State government and Idaho state government is one of the few in the region controlled by Republican lawmakers. Yeah, that's a little holdout, I guess, up there. Uh, California fell, then uh, Oregon and Washington fell. Um, they've gone for Montana, Colorado, I think. Um, changing and making laws and setting policy to, uh, uh, well, to, to rip people off and to hold them down, take the money. Um uh, I know that money just don't go as far as it did when I was young. And I'm not that old. I mean, 55 this year, I used to think that was old. But, man, that is really not that much of the time. But slow but sure and incrementally over years and decades, uh, they, they bring things in. It's back in the 70s when the uh, uh, Endangered Species Act come in, and, and it's used for trickery. They say the cows are harming the tortoises. It's not true. Matter of fact, the tort I've said this over and over. The tortoise is helped along. It's probably why he won, won the race against the tortoise, or the hare. I mean, the tortoise won against the hare on account of having all that good grubbing of uh, dookie to eat. There, cow patties and uh, sheep pellets. High bunch of good food for him. <clears throat> so. I've had a little discussion off here on Twitter, and I'll have to get a little bit deeper in that, but this person tell me that cows ain't the same as, because I said there used to be grazing, you know, herd animals, and they're all gone now. So, you know, the buffalo was the last major one to go. You still got, you know, some animals uh, that live wild, uh, the bighorn sheep, you got elk and uh, uh, deer and, and so forth, That, uh, but not in heavy concentrations. Yeah, herd animals... Uh, you might get herds of elk, but they're not 
they don't exist in the numbers if, uh, in the olden days. But you can imagine going and looking in the fossil record and seeing how much bigger the animals were. Everything was bigger. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I'm going to tell you because energy is neither created nor destroyed. This is like entropy. There's not, you can't gain information when you reproduce. So you're losing information. And the isolation of gene pools. So they're dying out. You can't replace them. You can't, you can't breed a wolf out of a chihuahua. Not even a Great Dane can you breed back into a wolf because that, uh, uh, genetic information is gone and lost. Uh, maybe scientists will be able to find them tucked away and extract them. You know, I expect to see a woolly mammoth uh, resurrected in my time. You know, Jurassic Park even is not the, which Jurassic Park's the wrong uh, strata for the for the dinosaur at that time from the movie. But hey, all you got to do is keep saying the same thing over and over. It don't matter if it's right or not, uh, and then just get somebody to say it real nice. And people will believe it, right? Well, you can go on here and Fox and Friends here from Newsweek. Um, long, long, long. But it's in the, uh, and I'll have to go touch it up. So, no, I've got it there. Yeah. Just a little bit of minor information there. There it is. Uh, Oregon Republican lawmakers say they are not taking any chances. All right, we're going to do a test. Ha says, let's do a test. Put a bunch of tortoises in a pen and let a cow in. Say, see how many are stepped on. Wait. Okay, a bunch of tortoises. How many cows? One cow? All right. Now, I'm going to tell you, and I've covered this, you know, the information's there uh, in past broadcasts. There is a lot of study, 300 years of study, and it shows that, uh, well, I don't know. You might find a a tortoise that got a, a shell cracked, but you know, have you ever seen anything, any animal trying to eat a, t a turtle or a tortoise or a turpin and break that shell? Uh, you think a cow's gonna go out there and jump up on it? No, or uh, cows go out of their way not to step on things and in holes and on rocks. I mean, they just don't like stumble along. Percy turtle, I think I'll step on them. Well, no, the, the tortoise uh, is, uh, cows are excluded in some areas like test sites out in Nevada. And uh, the numbers of tortoise have, uh, are decimated down to extinction levels. Less cows, less turtles. So it is the tail of the tortoise in the hair, with an H-A-I-R, hair, hide, yeah, hi. Well, let me try it again. The tortoise, of the, 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 the tail of the tortoise and the hair, hide and hoof. I've got it written down better. Yeah, hide the truth. And hoof to hide the truth anyways. Something like that. Uh, now, I've got a lot of, uh, you know, critical um, opinion here and all this stuff that I've uh, been sharing so far and uh, other than uh, one or two. And uh, so now I come in here to read out news. Thank you, Sherry Duvall. After being disrespected, ignored, and just plain dismissed, the Senate Republicans listened to their conscience and their constituents and fled the state of Oregon to deny, to deny the nut jobs of quorum. Uh, I, I, I shared that to Twitter as a quote. I pulled it out. I guess I should put quote marks on it. But government isn't just for tyrants anymore. That's right. Um, and we can find... Let's see, I believe that is my... It goes to my Twitter link there. And we can click this, I believe, and go right to Readout News. And I'll tell you the author there. His name is... It's an edi editorial and opinion, by, by the way. Because uh, somebody... If you look at my Twitter, I got... A little bit of smack in there. There's some fun in it, though. Government is, isn't just for tyrants anymore. That's right. You, too, can be a tyrant. And if you'll tune in next Thursday for 20% off, that's right. We got it, Flash. Going to give you a discount. Such a deal. Yes. Or you can not be a tyrant. That doesn't cost anything. As I write this article, it says, uh, did I tell you his name yet? Where's your name at? Where is your name? I've seen it before. 
And now I'm not. <clears throat> Let me go find his name. In Liberty. That's his name, Chris Brumbles. And he's the Columbia County Coordinator, the Oregon Firearms Federation, founder of Oregon Air Regulars 3%, and Northern Co Coordinator of the SAPO slash SASO. Y'all can figure out what them words are, acronyms. Uh, yeah, so as he writes this, I'm going to go ahead and read this whole article. Uh, you can come along and read the rest if I don't. As I write this article, I'm proud to report that the tyranny in Oregon is on hold for the second time this session. The Republicans in the Senate have walked out of the Capitol in Salem and away from the insane agenda of the far-left radical majority and their Kremlin crazy Kate Brown. <laughs> Got to love ad hominem, right? <clears throat> Which really discredits uh, a lot of things. It's fun, absolutely fun. But after being disrespected, ignored, and just plain dismissed the Senate Republicans listened to the conscience and their constituents and fled the state of Oregon to deny, to deny the nut jobs of quorum. That's why I copied when I shared it. I thought it was funny. Uh, and I knew it would probably bring out some criticism. Yeah. I mean, you're not nuts just because somebody's not nuts just because they don't have the ideo same ideology as you. You know, we got to be able to work through this, and, and only some will, excuse me, ever take the time to do that and, and take the time to reason. Speaking of, the only reason, says the article, we have government is to protect our property. That's what government is supposed to be, but it has become an entity unto itself. It's a terrible beast and consumes everything in its path. Uh, look at all the wars, the war on drugs, the war on poverty, and, and on and on and on. Uh, when they declare war on something to try to fix it, it's done. Over. Waste and spend, that's the purpose of government. You look it up. Waste and spend. Look look at the uh, report from uh, Iron Mountain for the... You now, I suppose some people would discredit it, but uh, it was a think tank publication. And people just don't write all that stuff as a good hoax, you know. Uh, quite obvious that it had some type of influence and... In, uh, influenced others as well. So they tried to pass the gun laws in the U.S. as well as mandatory vaccine. Now I read something about where uh, there's an exemption but the, nobody had to tell you about the exemption. So I don't know to the extent of what exemption there is whether it be uh, religious or personal or uh, for whatever reason. But uh, that was killed uh, uh, to get the Senate Republicans back to the table the last time they walked out. Laws are, uh, oh, let's see here, let me scroll a little bit. Laws are, are waiting to disenfranchise voters to make it almost impossible for us to re uh, refer them to destroy what's left of our state. Cap and trade was being forced through, uh, being forced through against the will of the people. I'm not too sure how true a statement that is because, uh, the vast majority of the uh, population is going to be citified with people that live in cities. Um, so, that, I mean, if it goes to, uh, I don't know, if people just willing to, yeah, I'll take more of my money. I don't know if they'll pass a public vote or not, but nobody has a right to vote to take anything from you. Uh, if you enter into a voluntary, um, well, if you want to go buy gas, well, you can go buy gas and whatever taxes are included in that to cost but you know the government comes in and, and sops it up um, but what if you wanted to you know make you an engine that got a lot me and Flash talked about this get better uh, mileage what if you wanted to grow some hemp and fuel your moped with with uh, hemp lots you can do but anyways yeah, God bless he says and keep y'all safe thank you and may other states follow your lead long live our republic I think it's gone. They did. They've gone past even the uh, uh, military occupation and into extrajudicial. So, pretty much lost. They, the government is not uh, does not represent the people. They've got their the lobbyists. Uh, it's a big old cheating fraud, ain't it? All right, let's go back to the radio log. I like to say R log, but nobody knows what that means. R log, what? Grimner. What is our log? No, radio log. It's a hashtag. 
R L O G. And you don't have to be a tyrant. But the government generally is. Here is uh, from Cherry Wilson from Countering the Rhetoric Newsfeed. That's uh, at CTRN Newsfeed. She's a friend from the left side. But you know what? I really like this girl. She's uh, she's not uh, she's not mean. Matter of fact, I seen I told her here a while back. Uh, I saw something about Trump supposedly being a Christian. Now I know that Cherry is not doesn't claim to be a Christian, but I told her I said. Uh, and I explained, you know, why the context. But I told her, I said, uh, you, you have much, a lot more char Christian characteristics than Donald Trump ever did. Uh, so I don't like that word, anyways, because it's it's owned and so controlled. And yeah, Christian, Christian, or the Christ-like. Yeah, whether you believe in them or not, there's an idea there of uh, doing good and not. Uh, not beating up the little person and calling them out on sin. Well, there's a saying, you're straining gnats out of your water while you're drinking uh, or eating camel steaks. So if you know what the cloven hoof, all that business is. A camel's got a cloven foot, but it's uh, soft. It's not a hoof. So they try to... Uh, uh, it, gotta, it chews its cud, too. It's a cloven hoof and chews its cud is, uh, uh, cud is clean meat. Uh the the camel didn't get really by there. But, you know, I don't know how the chicken made it either. Them things are nasty. Nasty. Well, runaway senators, militia, and cock money. What the hell just happened in Oregon? That's this uh, Tim Dickinson from uh, Rolling. Yeah, that is Rolling Stone. This is a real hip piece in here. They, the language, so I mean, it's just not that last guy's language. His is a little more... Uh, what just a little more venom in it, uh, and and the really really good writers, they'll tell you what happened and where to go, and what to do with yourself, and you can fill in the rest of that. You'll know what I'm talking about probably, and you'll look forward to it to the trip and the other things, and we'll just call it jump in a lake and uh, you know, and go to hell, figure it out, and you'll be like. Oh boy, this sounds like fun. So there's some really, really good writers that have a great deal of influence, and I noticed that, and uh, confirmed it at least ways for myself. And in, in dealing with these big guys out here in Vegas, that uh, set the opinion for the American people. Well, the Republican war on democracy <laughs> has has ground the state's government to a halt. So. First of all, mob rule is not a good idea, right? How many uh, could... Well, let's just say if you had more tortoises than uh, uh, cows and cattle, could uh, could they vote? No. Wouldn't do any good anyways. All right. Hall says it probably was. You're just not convinced. Yes, that's a good one. It's rigged. Vote faster, I say. Yes, convinced, easily convinced, <laughs> convinced easily. Yes, vote harder, stronger, and faster. Well, wow. You know, if you was uh, if you was uh, moved into a new neighborhood, and maybe you didn't have a lot of money, and you know you couldn't pick the real nice neighborhood, and had to get where miscreants were at. And, uh, even the law might be afraid to just come around unless they come in great force. and uh, So you can't really expect the law to save you in some places. So then you get this gang that say, well, let's go down to Mexico. How many people have got to pay protection there or something? But you don't think it happens in American cities? Well, <laughs> the cops are a pretty big gang, and some of them are corrupt. In some cities, they uh, I mean, they write TV shows and movies about it. I mean, they just don't make that up. Oh, I wish I would have wrote that something down about fiction and, uh, what was it? <clears throat> fiction and history. Anyways, yeah. I think I did put it in the database. I might have to go look. Well, uh, let's see, where am I? Where am I? Right back up here. I'll start right back where I was in the middle of leaving off. Uh, Oregon Democrats won a supermajority 
and that's one word, so I spelt supermajority in my thing as two words. In the 2018 midterm, so the GOP no longer has the votes to block legislation. But the state's constitution requires a quorum to conduct business in the 30-seat state senate. That means that uh, if more than 10 of the state's 30 senators don't show up for work, nothing moves. Uh, 11 GOP senators have fled the state. We cannot conclude business unless we have a quorum. Oregon State Majority Leader Jenny Burdick, Jenny Burdick tells Rolling Stone the GOP walkouts, she says, are exploiting that in violation of their oath. Um, I, I guess I should have went and looked up what their oath actually is. I'd be curious. <coughs> Oregon State session canceled after mil militia threat. Uh, that was last, uh, when was that? Uh, last Friday, yes. And this comes from Steve Benham at KATU.com. The staff, uh, Friday, June 21st, 2019. Oregon State Police confirmed to KATU that Saturday's session was called off. The letter. Uh, the Associated Press reported a spokes uh, reported a spokeswoman for the Senate President Peter Courtney said state police recommended the Capitol be closed. There was a lot. You're going to have to really go to Cherry Wilson to get this story. Somebody said my name somewhere. Where's it at? Not there. I got, got I got another computer open actually. I'm going to have to go over here too. I think. Yep. Wait. It's in Real Liberty Media. Who said my name? I heard it. Tick. All right. Burdick. Yeah, that's her name. Well, I'm thoroughly chasing squirrels. <laughs> Grammy, you let your squirrel out. All right. Now, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> where, where, where? I was at Rolling Stone somewhere. There it is. Okay, and uh, so it's some multiple information here, but uh, and like I said, these guys aren't friendly towards the Republicans. Uh, Oregon Senate uh, session caps canceled. Uh, yeah, and on to the next one. Oregon State House shut down after lawmakers flee. Right wing militia announced protest. Kelly Whale, reporter of the Daily Beast, published uh, the 22nd. So, Cherry Wilson and a few others really pushed to bring this to uh, mainstream media about the militia. Is, uh, they were not even picking up on that. And even one of the lawmakers, you know, it's like, you know, send bachelors and bring body bags and come, you know, if you're coming for me. But meanwhile, militia announced that they would join a two-day rally to take the Capitol. Uh, security concerns prompted Democrats to uh, cancel Saturday's session. Now, here's one, and there's a lot of truth in this, because when people go and say, um, we're going to kill the government because uh, she's a, a dirty, extreme environmentalist. <laughs> Am I trying to be nice? But, yeah, this is a, a, the, the insanity in Oregon. It is a, a, a glimpse of our very dark future. Uh, I know some people don't think it'll happen, but civil war is... Um, probably coming. Whether you want to call it a revolution, you want to restore the government, uh, whether you're Antifa and you want to uh, kill a, a fascist, not a good idea. Just not a good idea. So People with guns, though, have involved themselves in a legislative dispute while the officials of one political party cheer them on. In these times, I keep hearing a tick. I thought it was chat, but I don't see my name over there. Um, <clears throat> okay. People with guns have involved themselves in a legislative dispute while the officials of one party cheer them on. And these times, everything looks <clears throat> like an ill omen. The capital is crowded with uh, crows. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so weird omens, huh? Ill omens. But it is not an exaggeration to say that if you're uh, not following the in, the ongoing insanity in Oregon, you're missing a uh, look at a very dark future. It, it begins with a not at all unusual squabble between the Republicans in the or in the Oregon uh, the Republicans in the Oregon legislature and the Democrats 
Democratic Governor Kate Brown. Well, I mean, she ain't by herself. There's other Democrats. There's 20 of them. And I don't guess she counts. Okay, so this will all be here. You can look deeper. Uh, I'll, oh, wait, before I go back here, let me uh, let me see. I've got some other links here that uh, bringing us up to to par here. I think I got two or three of them. Uh, where there's a lot more information. I'm going to uh, uh, include this. Yeah, Vanderhart's his name. Dirk Vanderhart uh, from Oregon Public Broadcasting. Um, some of these people are just uh, so talented in writing. You, no, no matter that there's a little different ideology, you can still s search out and, and pick out that uh, facts along the way. So uh, he says Oregon uh, Senate Republicans plan announcement that they could uh, return to work. And I'm saying that uh, and this is from June 28th. Yes, that's today uh, at uh, 7.31 a.m. He said that. So they're talking about maybe coming back uh, tomorrow. Senator, Senate uh, Minority Leader Herman, wow, this is a name, B-A-E-R-T, Barch, Sugar. <laughs> Where do you get that name? What kind of name is it? B-A-E-R-T-C-R-S-C-H-I-G-E-R. -E -E he is a junior. I mean, if you got a name like that, definitely pass it on. Herman was simple. Uh, he's a Republican out of Grants Pass, and he told the uh, Oregon Public and Broadcasting uh, Friday morning that he planned to make an announcement regarding the boycott that has shut down business in the Senate for more than a week. He said his members would not be in the audience when the chamber gravels in at 9 a.m. Friday. While this fellow sees uh, he would not discuss the planned announcement, he strongly suggested Republicans would be back to work in coming days. Well, uh, Sunday's the 30th, so I don't know why they would come earlier. I mean, what would be the point? Unless, like I said earlier, they just sent a few just so they could make a presence but still not have a quorum. Um, and that's what I would expect. So that, uh, you know, the deadline is midnight, June 30th. But they're talking about some other uh, outstanding budget and policy bills lawmakers are still considering. So it's going to be an interesting weekend, he said, isn't it? Yeah. Speculation in the Capitol has suggested Republicans would most likely return to work Saturday morning. I don't think so. And that lawmakers could sit through a marathon floor sessions in order to complete their work. Com continue reading here an Oregon Public Broadcasting News article, uh, Oregon Senate Republicans. But there is this one or the next one that uh, uh, further reading. So let me go to the bottom. There's uh, some a lot of inf information coming out. Uh, does Republican walkout mean the end for Peter Courtney's tenure? Uh, let's see. There's oh Hanford Nuclear Waste. That's up uh, uh, pretty close to Lonnie Clark. Up uh, she's pretty close to uh, Salem and that part of. Uh, the world there in Oregon. Uh, da -da. So also here, the SCOTUS block census censorship questions. Uh, I'm looking for some more stuff specifically, uh, and I have. I'll be coming to the closeout. Will be uh, with uh, discussing Roger Roots and John Lamb's uh, report. Maybe of this one, uh, and I think I don't remember if I put this in the blog or not, or the R log. But this is demonstrators urge Republican senators to uh, stay away from rural Arkansas. And this is again from Dick Vanderhart. Comes uh, June 27, yesterday at uh, 12:45 p.m. And I'm pretty sure that'll be uh, left coast time. Um, so Sal Salem rally urges lawmakers to stay away. I don't know why they would want to come back. Does Republican mean uh, the end of this guy here, uh, Courtney's tenure? Well, I don't know. I'm going to scroll to the bottom and see if I see these other headlines that was uh, of uh, importance. Like I said, you can come over and read all this for yourself. I did read it. Yeah, they uh, some pictures here. No, H no on the HB 2020. The flatbed truck rides by as uh, crowd rallies in the capital in Salem to protest House Bill 2020, and that came from David 
Mrs. Deckery took that picture for Oregon Public Broadcasting. And I've been looking at these pictures, and I have not found anybody that I know. I've not seen anybody that I know prominent, which I thought I might. Uh, loggers at the rally also voiced concerns about the House bill, and which is <coughs> expected to raise fuel prices. I mean, expected? Don't you got to know it? Or is it so vague you don't even know? <coughs> and would allow companies to offset their pollution, <laughs> pay, to, pay to pollute, by ensuring that some forces, air, forested areas are not logged. Well, that's not, you know, a bad idea to um, protect forests, right? Uh, but there's also a place to go cut some trees down, the, the thinning. I mean, commercially even. But people that would like to go out and cut uh, firewood and get a permit, you know, some places allow that. And, uh, other people, places like this, they will, uh, they'll beat you to death or put you in prison for cutting a Pulling a leaf off of the dead gum land out in the desert. No kidding. Or some places else, too. Yeah, it just hasn't got a lot of good sense all the way around to uh, the the way this uh, extreme environmentalism works. I, I believe in, in uh, environmentalism. I don't think you ought to pour oil on the ground or, um, you know, pollute rivers and all that. Uh, and I'll give my, I'm going to give you an example of... Uh, true conservatism versus the extreme, and that is the tearing down of the dams, like in Klamath Falls. This, this is a... It dries up pretty near, and when it gets real hot, that river don't run, and you know, all that water, them lakes provide a great deal of habitat. If they're worried if fish can't uh, jump over that dam, then uh, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of cheaper ways that could be done from um, fish ladders. and uh, Well, you could... Stock them. I mean, just whatever. But tearing down dams is, it's not helping the environment. It's not helping wildlife. It's not preserving any endangered species to tear it down. You know, I've even heard them talk about they ought to tear the, the Hoover Dam or the, uh, in uh, Boulder, Nevada. Crazy. Yeah. Where, where are you going to get your water then? Of course, they want people to die off, right? So here's the more news. I think this was the one I was looking for. Maybe not. It's the same one. No. Nope. Well, I thought I had a link open up for all that I was going to have there. Maybe it's somewhere else. Nope, not there. Not there. What's this one? Maybe this one's it. I think this is actually a guess. Yeah. From uh, opb.org news. Yeah, there's a lot of links in here. Let's see. I want to pull some headlines. Um, there's to do with the uh, blocking census citizenship uh, questions. All right, here we go. A federal judge to decide Hammond's access to Oregon public grazing lands. Environmental groups are trying to block the federal government from allowing the Hammond's access to some grazing allotments near the Steens Mountains in rural southeast Oregon. DOE uh, says no changes planned for handling of high-level Hanford nuclear waste. They've got problems at Hanford, if you don't know. Check out uh, Lonnie Clark, uh, age, The Age of Fission. You can find her at uh, the UCY.TV YouTube channel. Um, Nuts for Art is her uh, YouTube. Um, pretty smart lady. She's a liberal, also a friend of mine. But I'm liberal in many things, and conservative uh, web where if you can put titles, I'll have to take them to, to describe it. Um, let's see what else we got there. Are there more cougars in our space or more of us in theirs? Well, there's uh, there are some more, but I think uh, I think that about does it, except for to get back to uh, uh, cover Roger and John. And I have this link open. Let me see what the other one is. This one uh, is towards the end of it about uh, uh, Greg Bretzing. He was the uh, former uh, Oregon area uh, special uh, agent in charge, I think it was, uh, the FBI. What's this one? Oh, that's a calendar. Okay. Yeah, I got that for the date. Thursday the 20th is when they walked out. All right. Well, I'll just tell you who this guy is. He's gone to work. For Greenbrier's uh, director of global security, 
so he was uh let me look at his face I'm gonna see if I can read in it yeah he looks like I'll do you in and you won't even be able to stop me from Nigel Waukees published February 7th uh, 2017 and so this is old news but he is uh, relevant today because he's the only one left in the uh, the uh, lawsuit, um, and they they dismissed um, Astorita, the guy that uh, um, opened fire on Lavoie and them, and Sean and, and uh, Victoria and uh, uh, Ryan, because they say they didn't serve him personally. You know these guys, the the other people in the lawsuit, they are. Uh, they're listed like uh, Agent A and Agent B. Um, you know, they turn their body cams off so that their faces. What kind of, what kind of cops do we got when we we've got to have them masked? I mean, does does nobody not see this same thing as what's happened in uh, other places in the world where they mask uh, themselves? The the keepers of law have to hide. Why? Shouldn't you be proud? Why did you hide your face? Ryan English, Robert Shapiro, Miss Wart, and the U.S. Mar Special U.S. Marshal appointed from the Denver County Sheriff's Department, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Byrne. Why did you all hide your face? And that other girl that was with you. I'll tell you what. I don't have a problem being a judge and taking it and doing it on... You know, there's obvious right and wrong. You can convolute it, uh, convolute it all you want to, uh, by by calling it legal. It ain't right. So this guy, he was a federal Department of Justice investigation and FBI agents firing bullets at the late Lavoy Finicum and uh, failing to disclose that action continues, according to an exit interview uh, Bradsey did with uh, OPB in, in January. It'd be more here, but yeah, yeah, he's probably six-figure job, reckon, or more. Reckon he's getting a million dollars a year, or more. I bet it's high dollar, but it's that uh, uh, he lands at a local rail car and barge maker, so you can look that up. But it's uh, Greenbriars. He's uh, global security. It pays to play, uh, I guess. When you're evil, yeah, I'll I'll stand and judge you. Don't have a problem with that. All right, let's go back over and wrap this up because I almost ran an hour and I started a little bit late because I forgot to push the button. Here we go. This is all pretty quick. Oh, I need my notebook here for this one. <clears throat> this is a video from uh, um, uh, it's from the Lafoy Finicum a YouTube channel. The link is here. Uh, it's an update from Roger Roots. No, I'm sorry, it's not from the uh, Finicum. It's from uh, uh, Rudy, which is Lone Star 1776. Rudy Davis. That's he's got. He's a very big political prisoner activist. Does a lot of work. Um, I should do more. I was uh, listening to a guy the other day. They people used to do four hours for their bread and four hours for community and four hours for themselves. And then that's you still got another twelve hours. I ain't even sure what you do with the rest of the day, but uh, that's not a bad policy if you uh, if you weren't being stolen from and you had all your extra to be able to do it. So on the uh, on the Finicum wrongful death suit, uh, yes, Asterita has been dismissed because they did not properly serve him. But as I said, uh, how are you going to find this guy? Uh, they did attempt to communicate through the attorney, uh, his attorney, which uh, if you'll listen to the video, that this uh, uh, sets up for, uh, I might have wrote that down on my notebook, but it does show, uh, you know, that you're attempting to uh, to do, uh, I can't think of the right word for it, but it is, uh, here you go, Donna, and for the, the Browns and a lot of other people, the uh, U.S. versus Davis. Um, this is overturned, and in, in a lot of people are going to have to be coming out of prison. Now, what this is is, uh, um, let me find it. <clears throat> let's see, let's see. Hold on, with me just a minute. Here it is. Uh, 
So this 924C is uh, basically it's conspiracy. Uh, one count will take you, give you five years uh, federal, and then a second count's going to give you 25 to life. So when you stack on, you know, three, four, <laughs> whatever, uh, you know, we've got Greg Burleson that uh, was 68 years. Uh, his case is uh, still before Judge Gloria Navarro. Um, of course, with the dismissal with prejudice of Bundy et al. Uh, tier 1, which was actually second, actually the third round of trials, because I did redid the, the first round, which was tier, uh, tier 2. They started at Tier 2, went to Tier 1, and Tier 3 got dismissed as well after uh, Cliven, Ammon, Ryan Bundy and uh, Ryan uh, Payne, they were dismissed. And then the other guys that were in the next uh, tier, which was, uh, yes, uh, tier three, the lowest, they call the lowest uh, people. There was, uh, uh, well, a few of them. Uh, <coughs> let me see. Hold on. So, uh, conspiracy, 924C, conspiracy uh, to obstruct or impede a federal officer with a firearm in a crime of violence. Now the uh, you know, it'll be all in the links here. The uh, uh, let's see from the scotusblog.com case files, uh, United States versus Davis. So they've um, I expect a lot of people that are going to be getting out. This is one of these things they hang on people. And yeah, they also here is the uh, firearm offenses use of firearm 924C. We've got Cornell Law of uh, uh, telling us what about Amicus uh, Corey is and. Uh, uh, a petty fed. They, all this stuff is referenced by uh, uh, Roger Roots in the uh, video, uh, the offense uh, exception, and also on uh, on the judge panel for the ninth. Is it uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals? Um, one one of uh, Obama's, I mean uh, Trump's judges. He appointed on there. I think it was. Is it Watford or Fletcher? They've got two. They've pegged out two of the, the judges that will be on this. On the Oh, well, I guess i tell you what I'm talking about. The, yeah, the um, the court of, uh, well, the, the state has filed an appeal to uh, bring the court, the, the Bundys back to court, even though it was dismissed with prejudice, um, excul hiding exculpatory evidence, uh, Giglio. I was, was saying it Giglio, but I guess it's G Giglio. Giglio, you can say it, G-I-G-G-L-I-O, I think, and uh, Brady violations. So, <clears throat> let's see here. The, fi the the state filed, yeah, for a motion of continuance here, uh, and that is uh, in the Ninth Circuit Court. It's a three-judge panel, um, and Roger thinks, seems to think that it would, it might take up to a year to go through. Now, I've covered this earlier in an in a earlier broadcast and uh, read the rules on that. And I'm surprised they did not push it through because I expect they're not going to be able to let the Bundys get away with uh, bucking the government. Um, and I would think they'd want to got that through there. And, and they're not going to do another hard roundup. They'll want everybody placated or locked up uh, where they, they won't get any problem from PETA for running cows to death out there in the the hot time of the year and, and uh, when the cows have uh, calved. Alright, so Greg Burleson, he's still under Navarro's uh, um, jurisdiction there. She should have been already released him. And Todd Engel, he got 14 years and um, a couple of charges there that, you know, this conspiracy always comes up. And then they said he come across line, uh, state lines to uh, f to do an extortion, like saying, uh, if if uh, we're saying you you're gonna turn them cows loose and we're gonna go help you let them out, uh, then what you're you're saying that that person then is denying the state the uh, the contraband and the uh, spoils of war, because that's what it really really breaks down to. Now, so his his appeal though is in the uh, Ninth Circuit Court at this time, Todd Engel, uh, and the second Bundy case. Now we're going back up to uh, Oregon. Then the sec the first the first round we had uh, uh, Ammon and Ryan and Shauna uh, um, who else was in on that round? There's a couple others there. Um, well, I should have wrote it all down. 
But anyways, here we go. Uh, they got all net, not guilty in October 2016. They were not convicted. And then the second round, see, they split them up because, you know, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket if you're a you know, government. So in that round, uh, second round, wait a minute, somebody say something. Let me see. Somebody say something to me? No? I keep hearing a click like it's chat. Maybe it's because uh, I got another computer open. Maybe I'll go look and see if it's the other chat room. It is. Look at there. It's red. So I know somebody said something. Uh, let's go see. From Wanataki. Wanataco. <coughs> I think I got to back up. Wanataco says, nah, he won by perseverance in the face of extremely adverse times. Uh,. I might have to have that in context. Go ahead and tell me again. Juan the Taco. What that means. Who are you talking about, Juan? Uh, and then on to say, Vinny, but it isn't democracy in itself. Mob rule. Uh, some will claim that a majority or the people... So this is from a while back here. Sorry to get... It takes so long to get back to you. Or, let me start again. Some will claim that a majority or the people as a whole have given their consent to be ruled, even if many individuals have not. Such an argument turns the concept of consent on its head. No one, individually or as a group, can give, can give consent for something to be done to someone else. That is simply not what consent means. Thank you. That's very good. Uh, and I get a lot of people trying to say, I, I wasn't there when the contract was signed, the Constitution, you know, and not a lot. Like, I shouldn't be on there, but... The Constitution is not a contract over the people. It is a contract over the performance of government and those people that occupy these seats of decision that they are supposed to be not doing what uh, these people are supposed to be doing here that, that Juan Ataka was talking about in this mob rule of democracy and uh, claiming to be able to give consent for somebody else to violate another. Well... I mean, you know, you, you can look at the extremes of laws from uh, one one direction to another, you know. When is is it okay to kill somebody? That's what I, I really got those guys' attention in the courthouse in Denver when I said to them, I said, you know, we've come a long ways in this world where uh, we've gone from our first responses to kill. to kill." And that, they didn't know who I was at first. I mean, I introduced myself, but uh, that really got their attention. And then they looked in and said, oh, I'm a poot and... Uh, must be one of these uh, uh, malcontents in a sovereign citizen or something like that. But no, that's that's not not even close. Uh, a lot of people that uh, seem to gravitate into these situations have been um, worked over in some manner of uh, a fashion by the system, and um, e even people that uh, feel like maybe they've been betrayed by the system and. Then you get to these wacky, crazy people. Uh, uh, Corey LeCue. How is that guy not back in jail already? I mean, got out of prison and I bet you he's got a gun and ready to go kill somebody and others. It's not the answer. War is not the answer. Uh, there is a prime example of what... And they're, they're being criticized by the Democrats. The Republicans were trying to protect the people... and it, well, they missed a lot of opportunity to actually expose the uh, uh, the wrong in this. But other people are talking about it, and as you've heard me say also there. Um, right, let me bounce around a couple of tabs here. <clears throat> Back to the bucking goober mints. Yes, Grimner. Goober mints. Yeah, I never understood why anybody would like a mint-flavored peanut. Maybe it's a peanut flavored mint. Goober mint. Well, that's one of the little funny jokes for the not too hard to entertain. Alright, well, let's go back over here. Wait. Oh, I'm pretty close to done, Grimner. I'm real close to being done. I'm wrapping it up here uh, on the uh, update. So we have all those filed in there. Uh, let's see. One more page here. Um, I think I already covered all this. I did. Let's see at the bottom. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, I did cover that too. Oh, one thing I didn't say. Uh, in the... Uh, what trial was that? 
that uh, Roger was talking about. Judge Anna Brown pulled 400 prospective uh, jurors, half of the the 800 prospective jurors, <clears throat> excuse me, from the pool. Just some of them would probably have been a good call to bring them out, you know, whatever they was financial hardship and so forth. He talks about, it. but it's all in the uh, it's all in the uh, R log. And I'm going to close out here just uh, real quick, like you know, the bottom down here on the R log, the radio log page here. Uh, if you can find it as a ponder gander, you can find it at reallibertymedia.com forward slash author forward slash vine or Vinny if you spell it V-I-N-E, which I've taken to doing. Let me ask you this. Who is he for whom you raised the gallows tree? Am I asking you? He who serves me best, said he. That's the hangman said that. Uh, I've got that on bit shoot. And the link will be right here. You can click on it. The motto on the courthouse is a quotation from Virgil. Uh, Virgil. It translates to, uh, having been warned, learn justice. Unbound, the whole truth in nothing but, I say. And the beautiful thing about truth is it is so easy to tell. And that's what Carol Bundy says. And you ought to see the twinkle in her eye when she says it. She had a knowing. I personally have... Uh, my doubts about how things have, are yet to turn out for the Bundy at all, folks. But sometimes you got to do, you got to make do with what you got. You cowboy up. Hey, this is uh, What Matters has been a Ponder Gander. It's a radio writing series of USA versus Bundy at all. It's a Bundy Ranch standoff and trial report by me, your host, Vincent Easley II. It's the think and reason, raising expectations through thought provoking episodes. Standing in the gap, connecting voices, considering perspectives, and broadcasting what matters worldwide right here at reallibertymedia.com. Thanks for coming on along. Uh, this is the Freakers Friday, spelled with two E's. Uh, let's be free, the Freaker Friday. Grammy's in a rocket chair. She's free and unbound from the tetters of Earth's gravity. She's blasting off in a rocket chair tonight at 7 Eastern. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Gas free Grammy. Go, go, go. And at 11 Eastern, we've got, if Moose eats here, it's going to be the Freakers Ball, y'all. And if not, it'll be balls to the walls. And not your balls, but their balls. Take their ball. Don't let them take their ball and go home. Put it against the wall. That's right. Tomorrow, Flash will be here with the Dork Table. And uh, I don't know what the river level is, but I'm. I don't. I bet it's, I don't know. I gotta go check it. I'm gonna make a river, I'm gonna make a river trip again. Another one. And do a float. If I can get somebody to go with me, I really like it. But anyways, so I may or may not be here tomorrow with uh, Mr. Flash this somebody on a dark table. And that comes at uh, noon o'clock on the eastern side of the country. Uh, Sunday. This is the big day right here at Real Liberty Media. Uh, if you come a little bit early at a quarter to 12, you can hear Grimner as he tunes up for some blues. And we play some trivia for about three hours. Thank you, Hans. Judge Dredd, he says that I'm at least I'm honest. Thank you. Glad you was able to, uh, to tune in and listen. And I'll get you the link for it when we get it put up there. So you can uh, download it and uh, bring it back and pick out what, uh, what you didn't quite hear. So anyways, yes, considering perspectives and broadcasting what murders worldwide. Uh, we're back uh, Sunday there. Where would I leave off? Quarter to noon. Grimner's tuning it up, playing, and then at uh, 12 o'clock we start trivia. Uh, if you got slow internet speed, you'll um, probably want to tie one hand down to keep from throwing things. When you get beat out by all these smart people we got over here. Yes, very smart. And not just trivial matters. But, I mean, if you've got, and, and Flash is pointing this out, if you've got a, a question, come on over here to the chat room. It is reallibertymedia.com, and you'll see uh, you lots of buttons to push. Click the one that says uh, pop-up chat. Or if you're an IRC client. Uh, okay, Grimner. I mean, Judge Dredd, he's, uh, he's complimented me in backhanding Flash at the same time. Oh, Flash is my friend. He makes my heart smile. I love him. He's uh, uh, He and I, well, he tried to break up with me one time. 
Like, you can't break up with me. We're friends, man, for life, forever. Yeah. But, hey, we've got a Bunny Ranch playlist. Uh, most of are my original uh, works there. A few couple of copies, anyways, and uh, uh, shares. But on the Real Liberty Media YouTube, just uh, type in the HTTPS, uh, semicolon, forward slash, forward slash, YouTube.com, forward slash, Real Liberty Media, all one word, and that'll bring you right in there. And uh, playlist and uh, all our other shows there. And I've got a few pay playlists over there. The Bundy Ranch playlist is the one you'd be looking for. Under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Even if you're not good at it. Some people are better than others. Well, this is only here. This is what I've shared with you is... Uh, uh, a little build up here for to if you want to know what's going on out there in Oregon with the senators and then also we've got uh, the Bundys and those people that stood with them. And you go right on down to the end of this radio log you'll see the Bundy Rant standoff YouTube playlist you can just click on it. That's me right there in that picture in the white t-shirt under the bridge uh, and back up high right beneath where Eric Parker EJ was uh, watched over the people that came to stand in the gap shouting loud, loudly echoing what is the American way? Truth and justice, and not just because you say so. The government is of and by we, the people, not to be ruled over by force of might and governed and not governed or governed without representation or governed at gunpoint, uh, as some folks have called it. Uh, and as a minor uh, member, as a, as a member of the minor media, I, have a, I encamped in what has been called the Battle of Bunker, Bunkerville. I reported uh, via internet radio from the Bundy Ranch standoff in the spring of 2014 along the Virgin River in southern Nevada. I returned to Las Vegas for the federal trial of USA versus Bundy et al. as a reporter and as a, and as a witness, number 303 for the defense. So you'll find history and current events, live stream, video, radio broadcast of the standoff led by the BLM, the, the Bureau of Land Management, so that we're not confused about that Black Lives Matter, uh, against the peaceful pushback protest standing in the gap at the Bundy Ranch in the spring of 2014. And I'm continuing to stand a witness from the Las Vegas, I was then, but I'm standing here, or sitting here, witnessing still for the Bundys and those that stood with them. Uh, I'm Levy right here at RealLibertyMedia.com, author Vine, about me, about dot me, Vincent Easley. You can find the other all places that I might be and uh, come on over here and see this series of radio that I've done and uh, standing up. Donna is, uh, I think she, we might be able to get her in here pretty soon to uh, give us up about uh, Ed and Elaine Brown. Uh, some of y'all might uh, know who they are. They Basically, they said, uh, show me the law that says I'm supposed to give you my money to the IRS. Well, that didn't go very well. They, uh, unless this uh, uh, USA versus Davis can be applied, how I don't know how long all that's going to take, but uh, there's a lot of people hoping to be getting out of prison behind all this. All right, so that brings us to Monday. Oh, no, I didn't finish Sunday, did I? All right, Gramner in, in uh, the blues and trivia. Until 3 o'clock Eastern, 12 o'clock out there on the left coast again. Hal Anthony comes from behind the woodshed. And that can of whoop ass, it's not on you. He's giving you the means and abilities. A pathfinder leading you through. You know, I'm not dead or in prison. I'm pretty sure because I had took enough lessons from Hal not to be saying stupid things out of, uh, well, we have people say things out of their emotion, you know, and then they end up in prison. They come around trying to sign me up. Hey, 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 let's get you signed up for the militia here. Well, get your ID, your name, write it down here, here, here. I said, I'm not here to join nobody. Come of my own accord. I'm not a joiner. Uh, where am I? What happened? Did I? Oh, I went all the way up to the top. How'd that happen? Let me get back down here to the bottom. I guess, no, that's all of it. Yeah, okay, so that leaves us, uh, left it Sunday again, behind the woodshed. And then we come back, Grimner is here at 7 o'clock Monday night for some leftovers. They're mighty grim, but sometimes uh, you will not choke to death. 
Come on along. Grimner has a great voice. Uh, if uh, if you don't know who Grimner Freeman is, he's the uh, chief cook and ball watcher right here. Real Liberty Media. Two Stevie. Flash is still doing his crazy two uh, two o'clock Eastern uh, radio. It's like sensible hours if you're in Denmark. It's because it's 8 a.m. Yeah, and uh, he's uh, in a perfect world. Contrasting the occupation all by himself. I tried to. I woke up a little late. I was going to try to jump up, wake up, and jump in with you this last week, but it didn't happen. Um, after summer, we'll we'll kick all this stuff around and go back in. So, I, you know, this is a special broadcast today. I'm not. Uh, uh, I'm taking the summer off, so I'm not uh, bound here. Unless something comes up, then that, of course, then I got to do it right. Uh, so there Tuesday now Wednesday Grammy's back again at seven o'clock in her rocket chair, and I hope they don't put no cap and trade uh, tax on her. I don't know how gassy she is, but if they are, they're SBDs. They don't seem to bother me on the radio not one bit. She'll blame it on her cat though, probably if she did turn one loose. <laughs> I love you, Grammy. Just kidding. Back Thursday, such a deal. Twenty percent off. Flash somebody is back, and I got to tell you, Flash has been. Getting a lot better at radio. He doesn't cuss near as much, um, but that's not the point. Um, he's getting uh, more comfortable uh, in uh, being solo. Now, I think it was a year of radio. Well, well, me and Flash been doing radio off and on for a long time, several years. But when I first started in 2013, I was just nervous, nervous, nervous to, to come on air. And I don't know why. It's like... There's some amount of uh, expectation. Hey, Circle. Yes, I love you, too. This is Circle is Flash's better half. She's such a wonderful person. I like these two people. Um, Flash can be cantankerous. You know, but we are who we are, right? Um, we don't love somebody for who they are. But we do in spite of who they are. You know, trying to change people, and that'll never work, you know? Um, you know how many psychiatrists... It takes to change the light bulb. Just one, but it really has to want to change, doesn't it? Okay, so we're left off at Thursday. That is at two o'clock in the afternoon with Mr. Flash, somebody from Denmark. He's an American in Denmark. Uh, don't not to be confused with a, an American werewolf in London, but he does have that hair uh, everywhere. He says there is sensors. They're like nerves. I keep my hair short, like a cop haircut. Yes. And we're back to Friday. Thursday, yes, sir. That's how you pronounce it. It's dang Arky speak grimness. It's Thursday. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't think that I will be back on there next Friday. Perhaps, depending on uh, um, what situation might arise. And I wish the government would stop. You know, I want to go, I want a puppy, I want to go get my cat and bring it back home. I want to get a goat and build a fence and milk and have chickens and I don't want to have to worry about jumping up and have to go back and stand in the gap and be a witness to the crimes of the state against people that are just trying to make a living. <laughs> people think Clive and Bundy some big rich rancher. He, he lives in a 1950-something old house. Uh, I'll tell you something my uncle said. He's got money. He says, you can tell the man by the size of his junk pile. Um, and you know what? When you need something, you go out there and, and make it. Uh, these are purity country folks. Salt of the earth. Anybody, I, I just don't know. But a lot of people, you know, they don't have any connection to the earth. And then they want to set up and, and uh, read their magazine articles and tell people that they shouldn't uh, piss piss on the, off their own front porch or something like that, right? Oh, you'll kill a roly-poly. Um, laws are different, though, in different states. And my neighbor, who's a very distant cousin uh, from, like, 1700s, our, our family line come together easily, or split back then. Anyways, uh, yeah, she's uh, traveled a lot, and I've been to all but four states. And laws are different. And ignorance is no excuse. So you've really got to be guard yourself in all kinds of ways. Where you put yourself, where you allow yourself to be, and uh, what's coming against you. you got to be aware 
of where you're the place that you're occupying because chances are if it's an empty space it will be occupied by something that's coming along down the pike that uh, you just don't know about yet so keep your eyes and ears open listen to Hal Anthony behind the it Cranky David I'm sorry that you two guys uh, got cheeky with one another uh, it was indeed a great uh, missed opportunity for uh, getting to now a lot of people might not be able to understand uh, right straight away what Hal's telling you you've got to really listen and, uh, and work through it because you've got to work through all this other uh junk is piled up in there that is everybody so confused these people that think that uh, whatever constitutionalist uh, uh, patriot whatever name you want to put on there a sovereign citizen uh, all this stuff these uh, you, you think that you can use the power of your words against the power of the state's words and all I can tell you is uh, look at the people that are uh, locked up and uh, you got to be smart in this stuff got to be smart I think that wraps it up. Uh, yeah, back again to next Friday. And uh, that'll do it. Uh, let's see. We've got about four and a half hours, Grammy, will be here. And I think she's back. She took uh, a week off. And Moosey, let me go to the chat. Is Moosey in there and listening? I don't think she likes to listen to me anymore. Uh, Grimner, is Moose Girl with you tonight? She says I talk too much about the Bundys. So I'm away. And uh, Judge Dredd wants a, a herd of cattle and an old whale. You know the uh, Beverly Hillbillies uh, in the uh, the storyline. They were not far. They come from just on the other side of the river from here, just a little ways. Oxley and uh, then Granny was over and across the line in Tennessee, over across the Delta. I have I. It's not a Stetson. You know I want a Stetson though. My next. Hat. And this one here is about I've about got it wore out. Grimner, it's a it's broke. It's a straw hat, and it is a rodeo king. I want to be a rodeo clown. I wish I could find that song. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna wind this broadcast out right now. And go push a button. Pause. <laughs> 